Hello, I'm Will Smith. Welcome back to Citizens Forum. Today is the 10th of April, and my guest today is Oliver Schmidtke. Oliver is a professor at UVic, and he also has a group of friends and colleagues, and they are taking it upon themselves to get out there and make a difference in our refugee crisis that we are currently experiencing the beginning of. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome Oliver to our show and tell us about your project. Thanks for having me, Will. Um, we, we thought about what we can do in light of a real global crisis that we have. If you look around the world, 70 people forcefully displaced. In Europe, you have 5,000 people a year dying in the Mediterranean Sea. So it is really dramatic, uh, but it is also overwhelming. You hear about these things, you know, that millions of people are on the move. What can we do in our own community? And we thought, we, we do have enough resources. We are committed enough to do this and got 20 people together, mostly from the Department of Political Science, but also some friends and retirees, and started collecting the money and preparing for a young family from Africa to come here. You know, we're looking at um, a sponsorship that is privately, um, pr privately based, some uh, government money, but these people come through the UN system. And they're the most those uh, cases that are most in need, those that are in precarious situations. So there's some urgency. Are they, are they being displaced primarily by war? Is that right? War, war um, environmental disaster, um, hunger, you know, there's drought. You know, there are a couple of those um, issues uh, behind this. The UN vets them and they come up with a priority list. And, tho and those cases that are co-sponsored by the government and private sponsors, they make it up to the top list and then they circulate basically a list across Canada for these private sponsorship groups to see what will be a good fit, you know, how big, you know, a refugee family you want to sponsor and so forth. So what are you doing uh, already? It is actually a lengthy process. You have to bring people together and think about who does what, how do we raise the funds, that's the most important part. You know, we need to have enough funds in place to sustain the family for a year, so roughly $30,000, $35,000 that we need to raise before they come here. So rent, food, everything. But it is more than that. It is about providing them with a new home. So I think about school, you know, where do we find medical services? Who takes them to, you know, across uh, the town? Who introduces them to services? Who does the SIN number? All those kind of small things. So then mm -hmm. we, we brought together 20 people and, you know, it's always interesting to see when people get together, oh, you know, I know this or I've done that, I've worked in the school system. So you, you draw on the expertise of people and you work as a team. Even before they come, we've met now at least eight, nine times. And it's also great way of getting to know your community and reaching out to people. For example, we had one family said, all right, you know, our mother passed away. We no longer need the furniture. Do you need it? So uh, it's put to good news. It sits in the garage and we wait for them now to come probably in a month or so. Okay. So how, what have you done so far? Mm -hmm. So have you, do you have a family that's already arrived? Um, yeah, that is the latest. Not yet. You know, we wait for them. It can oh, be okay. any t time from four to six weeks, but it's because it's getting definitely very close now. Oh. Uh, so uh, it is, you know, first of all, this kind of vague saying, all right, we commit to this. But then, you know, it gets, it, the closer you get to the date, the more concrete it gets. Oh, now we know it's going to be three people, right? Yeah, we, we, we can prepare as one child and, you know, so a small family. So we can start looking for an apartment and, and all those things that are involved in preparing for their How arrival. long did it take? How, when you initiated the process? It's a couple of months back now, uh, I'd say um, around um, Christmas time that yeah. we, we decided, you know, we as a group can do this. You know, people are also hesitant. They don't know exactly what is the responsibility, right? It is kind of a daunting task. It's your task really to look after this family for one year. All aspects, right? Do they speak the language? Do they have medical needs? All those things, right, that you are responsible for. Uh, so, but people stepped up to the plate and, you know, it's a great degree of enthusiasm to bring these people together and see, you know, that outside of normally I see them as colleagues, you know, now we pitch right. in in a very different way. This is very interesting. So how did it, what, what gave the impetus? Was it a couple of people, that, a core people mm -hmm. or? Um, I'm, I'm directing the Center for Global Studies as well. So we deal with those kind of issues on a regular basis. So we had people there. My wife and I went to a presentation of a UN representative and he mm. told these stories of people who can't get out of situation in UN camps or, or in desperate need to move um, medical needs. It's just the dramatic si images of these people being in dire need of help. That also said, you know, we can do, you know, we can only do this for one family. We can do a very little 
peace in a way and, you know, and give this family a new home. But it, it might add to hopefully what we do collectively. And Canadians have been relatively generous. You might recall in 2015, 16, people really pressed the government at the time to say we need to do more. You let right. in 50,000 Syrian refugees. This kind of enthusiasm is no longer quite there. And so there's a bit of people no longer see this as so urgent, although the numbers haven't gone down. And if you think you know, into the future, these numbers will rather rise. And so we had, we had 50,000 in 2016 into That's Canada. Right. And then 2017? It, much less. The, the much government less. currently commits to c close to 10,000 government mm -hmm. sponsors. And then it is uh, the private sponsorship agreements that add to those numbers, right? And, and here we are totally dependent on the engagement and the, uh, the generosity of Canadians in civil society. It's, it's a unique program that now Europeans look at as well, because often they're frustrated with the governments and say, yes. we want to help more, what can we do, right? And unless there is a program, and so the privately sponsored uh, refugee program is something that ha people have looked at quite closely. And you know, if you look around the country, uh, what it has done is also provided refugees with a great start in Canada. They, you mm -hmm. know, those who have a group of people uh, helping them, they do better than often the, the government sponsor refugees because they have the support system. Right, you have a personal... You, you go with them, right, you go shopping with them, you show them a bus system. It takes a lot of time, but it's also extremely rewarding. I, I've, I've come to the tail end of my first group um, a couple of months ago, and it is amazing what you learn, right? It's not only what you give, but what you get back, sure. and, and, that's, and that's really an amazing experience. I can well believe that. I, one of the things that I, I, wanna, I like to talk about is this concept that we are in a time when we can't even see what's going to be happening. We have no idea of, the, of what the future will bring to us. Mm -hmm. And so to me, having people that are willing to step up to the plate and, and do things like this without yeah any uh, encouragement, that's just wonderful. Can you say that, would you say that this is something that's sort of new, that people's consciousness has sort of mm -hmm. turned to this because of mm -hmm. the internet and the way, because I, I don't mm -hmm. think that this, we had groups of people saving people in mm -hmm. World War II, but I don't, I don't see it as the same yeah. way. Could you comment on that or is it it's hard to see? Canada has a relatively proud history of helping refugees. You might recall the Vietnamese boat people right. that we took in a couple of tens of thousands at the time, but it was primarily done actually through government sponsorship. Right, that's what and I so mean. And so it started in the 70s. And, but you, we might see, it's also the frustration with politics, right? Yeah, that you feel disempowered, you, know, you feel overwhelmed, you feel also disenchanted from party politics. What do you do instead, right? You know, there are other ways of expressing what you feel is important be it the environment, uh, be it helping refugees. There are these causes that, you know, you sometimes need to, to take things into your own hand and say, you know, we can't wait to be prompted, right, by political authorities. And exactly. if, we have, we, if we have something in place, and with the internet, you can actually mobilize lots of resources. And, you know, in a way we count also on our own community here in Victoria to help us either, you know, with time or with, with donations or money to, to get to our goals. So, but it is really a community effort. And, and that it, it is, it hopefully has also long-term effects that you mobilize people and people realize, oh, we can do things on our own, right? We can move our communities. And, you know, I think this experience will stay with people and maybe they go on to do other kind of things, right? Oh, I think it's <laughs> great. I, 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 could people, uh, people could contact you to help you with money, but could they also, like, mm -hmm. I can see other people saying, gee, I, we could do that, we'd like mm -hmm. to do that. So could they contact you for help with uh, them, just to talk about it? We have, most definitely, you know, they're most welcome to, to contact um, us. Uh, our group is now more or less complete with 20 people, but I know at the ICA, the Intercultural Association Victoria, right. they are constantly looking for people and um, they have wonderful people that would direct you and they put you in touch with people who might still look for people for, to, to establish a new um, re refugee sponsorship group. So I think there are plenty of resources if you want to help or even if you have some time and say you want to teach some English right to these refugees. Right. Just meet them and you know, go out and for an hour and, uh, and help them this way. There are many ways to help for sure. Great. I, I think that uh, probably a lot of people would like to, to do this. And I really do think that, uh, you know, we have access to things, to information that we've never had before. Yeah. And I think it's exciting that people are, are uh, just 
doing it without any prompting. For example, my wife and I were out driving around last weekend and there was a, about a group of five people in a neighborhood who had cleared out a little space that was public uh, land, I'm sure, and mm -hmm. on the street. And it, they had a sign that said, somebody has to do something. And they were making a garden. Right. I, I think that a lot of people are frustrated mm -hmm. politically now. Mm. And so, you know, this is the way to do it, is yeah. to relocalize, to, to get our, our uh, mm. priorities straight at the very local level and not worry about what, mm. because, I mean, the, the, the people at the highest level are not, uh, well, you just said today, mm. what's happening, what was happening today, what did Trudeau announce about yeah. refugees? Uh, make it di more difficult for particular asylum seekers to claim uh, refugee status here in Canada. So in, in a way, we, be, uh, we could say Canada is very protected. And that's right, we have the big oceans, right? Yeah, we have the US as a relatively safe country. We won't have probably the numbers that Europe has seen, let's say in 2015, 16, but we've seen increasing numbers on our uh, southern border, right? Yeah, it's in the tens of thousands. Mm -hmm. And first, you know, Trudeau sent out this tweet that, you know, everybody who seeks, you know, protection, you're welcome in Canada, but, you know, then he realized what this means, right? And now he, you know, he walks this back. So we need the support of our civil society to live up to the promise that Canada is okay. indeed a compassionate society, right? And that we do have the resources. If the government only puts up 10,000, know, so then we have to say, right, we can do much more than that. And, and I think, I think uh, we, we have the resource. We, have a rich, we are a rich country, right? And, and a huge country. And a huge country, <laughs> we need more people, right? And so I, I think considering what you put in and the, the radical change in you know, the lives of this family or you know, whoever you sponsor, right? It makes a tremendous difference. And you, know, you can't save human, humankind you know, in one stroke, but you can save you know, one family at a one time. Family, exactly. and, and that is a great contribution. And it, it also enriches our communities, right? It, uh, what we learn from this, you know, new members becoming part of our community. So I think it is, uh, in the end, a, a very rewarding experience for people to be engaged in this. Well, great. Thank you very much. Uh, we're almost out of time. Do you have right. any last uh, thing you'd like to say about? I, I can only reiterate what you say. You know, don't sit idle and, and wait for solutions to come. Uh, to, to be engaged in the community is, is a critical way also to, uh, to re-inspire our democracy because we often see democracy as going to vote every four years. It is also to be engaged. It is to be a citizen out there. And it means also to take some responsibility. And you don't, if you work full time, it's difficult sometimes, but, but just keep an open mind. You can do right? something. And do right. something and be even engaged in debates. I think that's so important for the state of our democracy. Well, and the other, as Jack points out, you know, we're, we're in a democracy, but if, if the democracy is unresponsive, mm. it's nice to do something that you can see directly the results. Indeed. So, yeah. Thank you very much, Well, Oliver. it was a pl pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for watching this segment of Citizens Forum.